Hello, and welcome to Everybody Has a Story. I'm Titani Wynn, and we're here today with Alice Waters, a chef, restaurateur, and activist for the local organic food movement. She is the owner of Chez Panis for 44 years, a groundbreaking restaurant in Berkeley, California. She's also the creator of the Edible Schoolyards Project. She received the Humanitarian Award Medal from Barack Obama in 2014. Ms. Waters, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. You have some very close ties to Yale. You actually helped create the Yale Sustainable Food Project and you opened an organic kitchen in Berkeley College. What motivated you to do these things? Why Yale? I have to first admit that I have a daughter that came here to Yale. And when we were here for the freshman indoctrination, we met the president. And I couldn't help myself. I said, I'd, I'd love to help to change the food at Yale. And so he called me into his office the following week, and I proposed the idea. He said, you'll have to talk to the chief financial officer about this. And fortunately, he really wanted to do the project because he wanted to buy local food from the farms nearby. His family had been in farming, and because of the, the, all of the progress of rebuilding around in his town, his, he lost his farm, family farm. And so he wanted to support the people who were taking care of the land. It's really easy for some people to say, like a big school like Yale has a huge budget, and some people might not have the kind of budget or the kind of time to invest in the kind of slow food movement that you really support. What would you say to the people who don't think that that's possible, that it might be a little bit elitist? Well, our future depends on it. The care of the land is the number one priority. How do we get that healthy food, all this amazing organic local food, into the markets where it might, people might be underserved. Well, that, that's why I started the Edible Schoolyard Project in Berkeley. And we are working in a middle school with a thousand students who speak 22 different languages at home. And we began by making a garden in the school. But the intention has always been to feed all children for free food that comes from those sustainable farms. And what's happened in 20 years of this project is that we've seen the kids really changed by having an experience in the garden, in their math class, or history in the kitchen. They're cooking, but they're learning about the history of a particular country and cooking that food. How do you foresee your project scaling to the rest of the country? Especially because there's a big perception that organic local food is something that's really expensive and a little bit elitist and inaccessible. Well, I think all of those ideas come from a fast food culture. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have become what we eat, and we eat fast food, and we begin to think that everything should be fast, cheap, and easy. And we aren't asked to think about how we could possibly do this. Now, during World War II, the President of the United States asked everyone to plant a victory garden so that they could grow food for themselves and food could be sent to the soldiers in the war. And we grew huge amounts of food, both in World War I and World War II, because we were encouraged to do that. And every part of the government said, here are pamphlets on how to do it. We'll send people out to help you. And, and, and we did that. We did that. And my parents had a victory garden our whole life, and they ate out of that garden. So, so it is possible. We just think that food should be cheap, and it will never be cheap. Mm. Food can be affordable, but if it's cheap, somebody's missing out, and it's usually the farmer. But what about the people who might not see it the same way? What kind of things might you say to give them a little bit of hope about the organic food movement. I think we really need to begin in the educational institutions. I really believe we need to begin at the beginning when children are young. But at a university, you have all of the resources and the expertise, and you need to really 
bring the ideas together and try to realize them in the dining halls, in the landscaping of the whole place. Thank you so much, Miss Waters. Although we have a last part, which is the classic, everybody has a story, speed round. What is your favorite meal to cook for yourself? Well, it depends on what season it is. And right now it's winter time. And I'm thinking about exactly what's in the farmer's market. I made myself a little crouton the other night, mm -hmm. spread with goat cheese and I wilted kale with garlic and olive oil and a little hot chili. And I put that on the crouton and I thought it was delicious. That sounds so delicious. Easy. What, if you had to pick one, what is the vegetable of your soul? Probably garlic. Uh, maybe tomatoes. There's a little bit of a tie between garlic and tomatoes, but if I only had one, it would be garlic. Thank you so much, Miss Waters. It was a pleasure and an honor to speak with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Everybody Has a Story. And from all of us here at YTV, thank you so much for watching. What's one for me? It's embarrassing. Yes. S W A R T. I always saw my dad cry three times. First time was on December 7, 1941.